They danced their way to their first Big Ten title in program history, March 8, 2020. But the postseason was canceled, and that's where we left it. The banner is hung in the rafters in an empty Xfinity Center. Cardboard cutouts, the only ones filling the seats today. But college basketball is back. It's the Old Dominion Monarchs taking on the Maryland Terrapins. We welcome you inside the Xfinity Center for the first time in a long time. Brennan Hartlove here for the Big Ten Network alongside former Maryland guard Travis Valman making his broadcasting debut today. And Travis, you were part of that team that was so strong throughout all the regular season. They had the postseason canceled. What was it like for you guys not able to prove yourselves in March? It was definitely disappointing. You know, you work hard all year for that opportunity really in the postseason to challenge yourself against the best of the best. But we understood it was something that was completely out of our control and that everybody was dealing with. So we ended up just, you know, continuing living but being proud of what we did manage to accomplish. And two of the guys that led you through last season, Anthony Cowan Jr. and Jalen Smith, the Terps are going to be without them this year. Yeah, I mean, Ant was our leader. You know, never missed a start. Uh, just a dog, a fiery competitor. And, you know, I think he deserves his, his jersey in the Raptors one day soon. And then Sticks. I mean, did it all for us. He scored, rebounded, blocked shots. He's a top 10 picket for a reason. And, um, you know, they, they were our guys. And those two guys made up 44% of Maryland's scoring last season. One of the guys they're going to look to to make up that loss is Aaron Wiggins. Yeah, Wiggs, I mean, he's always been, you know, able to shoot the leather off the ball. But I'm excited about the other things he's added to his game, the, you know, getting in the paint and finishing above the rim and making plays for others. So I know he's, he's mentally prepared to step into that big-time role, and I'm excited for him. And now when we look to today's game for Old Dominion, one of the guys leading their team is Malik Curry, the senior guard. Yeah, super crafty lead guard, um, shifty, got some stuff to his game. And I know he's going to come out early on and be aggressive. He's kind of like the engine that makes them go. Um, so I know he'll probably try and leave his stamp on this game early. And now as we take a look at the starting lines for both teams, some new faces for both of them. Yeah, uh, the first thing I look at is the backcourts. A lot of experience in both backcourts. Old Dominion, you got three double-digit scores coming back in that backcourt. And then on the Maryland side, obviously, Aaron, Eric, and Daryl have played a ton of minutes together. Um, two new faces in the front court, but two new guys who sound like they've meshed really well with the group. So uh, the both sides look like they're ready to go. Jarius Hamilton, the junior transfer from Boston College, and Galen Smith, not Jalen Smith, Galen Smith, the senior forward from Alabama. We are just about set for tip-off here in 2020. Excited to be here. Excited to be here. Back in Xfinity. A lot of people thought this day might not come. But we are here. We are back. And college, ball, college basketball is back in 2020. Underway from the Xfinity Center. Maryland controls and Eric Ayala will bring it up for the Terps. Placing Anthony Cowan Jr. graduated last year and set so many milestones for the Terrapins. One of the key losses for Maryland as is Jalen Smith. Number 10 pick in the NBA draft. But now Morcell looks to go inside, puts it up from the free throw line, misses short, and the rebound pulled down by Old Dominion. The Monarchs come in from Conference USA. This will be their first game as well. Bounce pass in the middle, miscontrolled, but stays with the Monarchs. Near side three coming, missed off the back of the iron from Malik Curry, the guy we talked about in the open. But now Maryland brings it down, and Daryl Morcell can be one of those guys that's really going to be a leader for the Terps this season. Yeah, Daryl's been here. This is his fourth year now, and, and he's seen, I think, everything there is to see at this level. Um, he's, he's ready to lead the young guys, and I know he's excited about the opportunity. Old Dominion foul on Joe Reese, the junior forward out of St. Louis, Missouri. Played in every game last season, averaging about 19 minutes per contest. Now Marcel will inbound it to Galen Smith. Early on, it's a lot about just getting a feel for the game. Morcell a three from the near side, and he knocks it down. What a way to start off his senior season. It's a big shot. I feel like a lot of the times when Daryl makes that first three, it's a good omen for the rest of the game. And he's really worked on that a lot over the past couple years. Can't tell you how many hours he spent at night in the gym just doing that exactly right there. Up, oh, no good by Old Dominion, and there's Morcell again on the rebound. Wiggins looks to spin inside, loses his footing just a little bit, but draws the foul. And that's what I like about this Maryland lineup right here. You have four guys who can all get the rebound and get out and push, let the wings run to the corners, get out in transition, and try and get some easy looks early. Take another look at that three from Daryl Morcell. He'll have the inbound underneath the basket. Now here's Jarius Hamilton. Knocked away, and Old Dominion will draw the foul. 
Again, guys just trying to get their footing underneath them, get used to the speed and rhythm of the game, get used to the basketball. But again, good start from Maryland with that Daryl three. Here is Malik Curry. He'll hand off to the far side and quickly get it back up top. Screen coming at the top. Now near side. Reese has a go and missed that one as well. Galen Smith pulls down the board and the Monarchs are still scoreless. Here's Hamilton. Plays into the low post for Galen Smith. Force back out. Tries to sneak it over, but it went out of bounds. And it'll go back to the Monarchs. See early on, Old Dominion double team in that post, trying to make it hard. Smith trying to get that ball back out to the perimeter. Tough cross court pass. Malik Curry brings it across the timeline, scored in double figures 21 times last season. Seven games, putting up more than 20 points. Here's Oliver at the top of the key. Some contact there, and the foul will be called against Maryland. A lot of screens early for Old Dominion, trying to move the ball side to side, get guys open using down screens, flare screens, it's flex action. Wiggs, Wiggs just got caught up trying to chase that, the shooter out to the three-point line. So Wiggins picks up his first foul, the 2020 Big Ten, Big Ten sixth man of the year. And believe it or not, coming off the bench, he still was one of the leaders in minutes last season for the Terps. Played in the top of the key, quick pass out to the corner. Now up top for Green. Oliver from the near side and missed that one as well. But there was a foul against Old Dominion. It goes back to the Terrapins. Looked like a zone look from the Terps there on that baseline out of bounds. Kind of trying to stop the offense from getting right into a scoring play. Just, you know, the offense reacts by just getting the ball in bounds and trying to run that zone look. But again, just switch it up, keep the offense on its toes. Now more sell at the top, hands off to Ayala, gets the screen from Smith, drives inside on the right hand, up off the window and in. First read off that ball screen. If the big doesn't stop you, you get all the way to the cup. That's what Eric did. Big time finish, takes the contact, puts it in the square. He's on the board. Terps on this 5-0 run to start the game. Old Dominion's had some looks, but hasn't quite gotten the ball to fall their way just yet. Curry at the top. Three coming. Missed that one as well, and Wiggins will pull down the board. A lot of jump shots early for ODU. I'm sure Coach Jones would like to see them get the ball in the paint, try to get something closer to the rim. Allen pulls it back out to Wiggins. A look to drive through traffic up no good and a fight for the rebound down low and the Monarchs pull away with it. Bounce pass down low up off the glass and Old Dominion is on the board for the first time today through Kalu Exipe. Transition defense coach Terz talks about it all the time somebody's got to stop the ball helps got to be behind them guys got to communicate. More sell. Bounce pa or pass down low, and Galen Smith goes up and puts it down for his first points as a Maryland Terrapin. It's a great look. The help side was underneath the rim, and Daryl just looked him off, stares at the man on the opposite corner, hits the big. Here's Curry, defended by Ayala. Down low. Up and over top of Galen Smith goes Ezekpe, the only scorer for Old Dominion so far this afternoon. It's a nice jump hook. Easy. Marcel at the top gets the screen from Galen Smith and keeps it himself. Wiggins, a long three, missed that one hard off the back of the iron. Hurry for green, and that one is not green. See guys getting a little tired. It's four minutes, no whistle. Marcel goes, and he's called for a walk. We'll go back the other way. Promising start for the Maryland Terrapins so far. To Eric Ayala being aggressive inside and Galen Smith getting it done down low for the Terps in his first appearance in a Maryland uniform. We'll be right back on the Big Ten Network. Let's take it back to last season now. Travis Valman against Fairfield, I believe it was, pulling up from three. Big shot coming off the bench. I told the guys, I get in the game, I get an open look, I'm, I'm going to shoot it. Why not? And I let it fly by the grace of God. <laughs> Pretty big smile on your face after that one, too. It's so. exciting. You work, you work hard for an opportunity like that. And let it fly, good things happen sometimes. We, we didn't want to tell you about that because we wanted to welcome you to the Big Ten Network family here. Brendan Hartlove, Travis Valman, behind the mics and 
behind the masks as well in this COVID-19 era. Old Dominion in possession on the near side with A.J. Oliver. Austin Trice, the senior, is coming to the game for the Monarchs. Joe Reese trap goes back up top to A.J. Oliver. Four on the shot clock, a long three, and he got it. Tough shot, good contest. Not much more you can do about that one. Good defense, better offense. He shot that one all the way from Virginia. Now Maryland looking to respond on the other side. That was the first three of the game for Old Dominion. Morcell looking to come inside. A little bit of contact goes up off the glass. The tip in is good eventually. I really like the pace Maryland's playing that early on. The ball's moving side to side. A lot of guys are getting touches. A lot of ball movement, body movement, and they're getting good looks. Really good looks. So the Terps after starting off on that 5-0 run are now back up by two, 9-7. We're about to see a line change momentarily for the Terps in first game of the season. Here's Curry going inside, passing to Trice, puts it up and eventually rolls home. It's tough when you get that baseline drive, all eyes immediately turn to look to the baseline, and it's easy for guys to sneak in towards the rim and get good looks. Squared up at nine here. Morcell has it at the top. He can come inside, now Ayala drops the shoulder. And he will draw the foul. So you've seen Daryl come off that ball screen and hit the roll man. So this time, the help out of the corner comes and tags the roll man. Leaves Eric replacing that out of the corner. Catch, rip, quick one dribble, and forces the defense to foul him. So the first mass substitutions of the game for the Terrapins, you know, they didn't have any exhibition games. You normally have some of those tune-up games. Now coming into the game, we'll try to get you those new players. Aquan Smart in there wearing the number 23. Dante Scott, the sophomore. Reese Mona on the inbound. And the seven-footer, Shoal Marial, on the ball now. And you have Hakeem Hart as well. I think I got them all. Here's Mona in the corner. Back up top to Dante Scott. Here's Hart. Three to shoot. Hart through the lane. Puts it up off the glass. Can't get the roll. Tough shot through traffic. Because now Old Dominion comes down the other way. Curry up off the glass and gets the better of Mona on that one. It's another one. They got to stop the ball a little earlier, higher up on the court. Once he gets in the paint, it's tough to stop him. Old Dominion, their first lead of the afternoon. And it looks like a zone look from the Monarchs, trying to switch it up again. Keep the offense guessing. It's a lot harder to play when you don't know what kind of defense is coming at you. Here's Hakeem Hart. Now Dante Scott on the near side. Mona. Cross court pass to Dante Scott. Puts up the three and air ball, but right back to Mona who goes off the window and in. I'll tell you, Reese is a hustler. That's what he does. Loose balls, offensive rebounds. He just has a nose for the ball. And gets there, gets the foot back. Travis, I know you're pretty close to Reese. You guys joking around a lot before the game about you being on this side of the court for the first time. Now, that's one of my best friends. I definitely miss being on the, oh, yeah, Chol. <laughs> Chol Marial with a 7-8 wingspan. Now Smart feeds to Hart. It's off the glass, no good. Dante Scott, the putback. But it's going and That's what Chol does. He's... You see him, he's like 7'3", that wingspan. Gets the block. Take another look here is Scholl. Or excuse me, that was the old Dominion bucket. Like you said, Scholl Marial, the big block on the other end. There it is. It's funny because you, you, you get to the paint, you see a wide open basket in front of you. You think nobody's <laughs> with you and out of nowhere will come from behind and swat the shot. Just this shadow overtakes you from behind. And you still don't see him. He <laughs> makes no contact with you, but he gets the block. The wingspan is crazy. He gets the transition opportunity. Dante running hard. Don't ever expect the layup to go in. Go hustle, get to the offensive glass, gets the rebound put back. David Struther checks into the game for Old Dominion, the transfer from UNC Pembroke. Scott makes that one. And like we said, this is the first game for either team, so you don't have those first couple exhibition games to kind of get your rhythm a little bit, get some of those bench guys into the game. So probably a different strategy in the first couple games of the regular season. Oh, for sure. You know, you're trying to get your rotations down, try different lineup combinations, see what, work, what works well, and, you know, get guys more experience. You know, it's a long season, and you want to get as many guys ready as you can. Joe Reese called for the foul. This group looks good so far. They're active on defense. They're moving the ball. Playing with poise, playing with confidence. And so when you, you've been a part of teams that have had significant turnover in the past, how do you kind of replace some of that leadership that maybe gets graduated or lost to the draft? 
Yeah, I mean, as the season goes along, guys step up as leaders. Um, you know, they graduate, they move on, and somebody else naturally will step up. You know, this group has a great, you know, natural core already of Eric, Aaron, and Daryl to lead. Some other older guys, Reese has been here. Um, so they'll have no problem with that. Here is Struther working on the near side. Has it tipped away, but it'll stay with Old Dominion as we head into a timeout. So two different groups for the Terps and two pretty good starts as Maryland has a 14 to 11 lead here. However, Old Dominion's made five of their last seven field goals as they kind of climb back into this one. But you talked about some of that experience. We'll talk more about that after the break here on the Big Ten Network. Back here on the Big Ten Network as we take a look at the head coaches. Mark Turgeon now in his 10th season as Maryland head coach. really doesn't feel like that long. But Travis, you played under him for, in your time here. What do you think his message is to the team in this pretty unprecedented season? Yeah, I think it's just be adaptable. You know, you never know what kind of challenges, obstacles are going to come your way. Um, they've already had to deal with a lot of things. But just be adaptable and be ready. You know, you never know when your number's called. You know, come in every day ready to work and just try and get better day by day. That's his... That's his thing. Every day, one day at a time, just get better a little bit. And his opposite number, Jeff Jones, had a long career as a head coach in the NCAA. He's 24th among active coaches for most Division I wins with 510. Now in his eighth season with the Monarchs. Here's Jalen Hunter. Five on the shot clock for Old Dominion. They kick it into gear. Jalen Hunter gets it back. That soars right into the hands of Dante Scott. Looks to go quickly down the other side. Akeem Hart. Scott. Now Quan Smart. Here's Mona. Cross court pass. Akeem Hart looks to go baseline. Forced back up to Mona. 10 on the shot clock for the Terps. Aquan Smart. No good there. And Old Dominion peels away with it. The ball movement side to side. I would love to see them get in the paint against that zone, though. The zone tries to get you to settle for outside shots. Like that one. Three is good there from Alvis Palavios, a redshirt junior out of Athens, Greece. Corner three is one of the easiest shots in the game. That three-point line out in the corner is not quite as far as it is from the top of the key of the slot. So you get a good look there. It's, it's a little easier to knock that one down. All the way to the corner. It came hard, but his foot was on the line. He made it though, corner three. But again, there's less room in that corner. It's tough sometimes, gotta watch those heels. See what defense they come back out in. I've seen 3-2 zone, I've seen man. I like the mix up. Looks like man now. And you think it's good for Maryland so early in the season to be facing you know, those different styles? I think so for sure, because again, throughout the season, you know, now non-conference at Big Ten, you're gonna see so many different defenses, offensive. You know, every coach is different, and you need to be prepared. Right down low, it's Ezekpe. Goes up over top of Shomariao. Maryland comes away with it. Dante Scott. In the corner for Mona. Plays it into Shoal. And now Dante Scott for three. Missed that one. Mona in there trying to fight for the rebound, and that's just the scrappiness we know from Reese Mona. And even that possession, you see, they didn't score the ball when it went in the post, but you saw five Old Dominion defenders converge, and it helps the rest of the offense move. Ezekiel on the other end draws the foul, and he's been very lively so far. Four points for the junior four from Lawrenceville, Georgia. It's a nice little hesitation move right there. He comes, he did a little, like, handoff fake. Acts like he's going to hand the ball off, keeps his dribble, drives baseline, aggressive take to the cup. And referees like to reward aggressiveness. The more aggressive you are, the more likely you are to get a foul call. He gets one there. And he's been really good early on. So Ezekiel Pei at the line. He was second on the team in total rebounds last year with 153. It's one thing this old Dominion team does really, really well. They led Conference USA last year in total rebounds. You know, it's just aggressiveness thing getting to the glass, knowing where the ball is going to come off. And I'm sure Terge talked a lot to the guys before the game about boxing out, putting bodies on guys, and crawling those loose balls. And that's the thing, because Maryland's a very guard-heavy lineup. When you have those big guys in there, you know, there's some emphasis when you look at Dante Scott and the competition with, like, Jarius Hamilton, the transfer coming in, on how well those guys can do on the boards. 100%. You know, rebounding is a big, big, big part of the game. Um, but even the guards are big. You know, Terge says it all the time. It's five guys rebounding. It's not just on one big man or 
or two big men. All five guys need to get their mans off the glass and rebound so you can run. So a higher press from Old Dominion now. You extend that pressure a little bit. Half the battle is, A, you're looking to maybe get a turnover, but you're also trying to slow the offense down. All the way over for Hakeem Hart. Looks to penetrate inside. Lost the ball, but will draw the foul. Maryland has made some substitutions, as I'm sure you noticed on that last one. Aaron Wiggins back in. Galen Smith and Eric Ayala. The two remaining are Dante Scott and Hakeem Hart, who finds himself at the line. No, Hawk, Hawk can shoot, and I'm sure that's part of the scouting report as a shooter, the closeout strong. Again, another rip, get downhill, tack to the glass. He's 6'7", get the ball as, up to the rim as quick as he can, and he drew the contact. And Hart's been one of those guys that's kind of been the, the preseason surprise for Maryland, you know, coming into his sophomore year, maybe now the sixth or seventh man, according to some of the things we've heard you know, around the program. I'll tell you what, that guy's super talented. He's not scared, he can shoot it. He just got natural basketball ability, and I know he's been working hard. Maryland employing a little bit of a different defensive tactic. Same thing, you extend that pressure. If you don't get a steal, you still have the offense setting up their offense like 22, 21 seconds left in the shot clock. You already did, you, you did your job, you know? There's eight seconds left on the shot clock now for Old Dominion. Curry will draw the foul against Ayala. Looks like the pressure did the job there. Again, you have six seconds left on the shot clock, and Old Dominion is trying to make a play because they defend off that pressure. So Daryl Morcell will come back into the game for Hakeem Hart. Curry's a tough guard, though. It's hard to keep guys like that out of the paint. They're shifty, they're de elusive, deceptive, and quick. Flavius. Now Curry, a long three, and he got that one down too. That was almost from the same range that Cowan hit the one last year against Illinois. No, that, was, that was a deep one. And you give him a little bit of space because he's worried about the drive. Mm -hmm. He says, you know what, I'll just pull up from here. Ayala, three of his own, and he got it. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> a heat check on the other side is Eric Ayala. They're going to look to see, look to him for that three ball a little bit this year. No, he, he's a shooter. You know, that's what he does, especially off the dribble. He loves catching, get, getting his feet under him. Nice rhythm. Dante Scott with the rebound and draws the foul. Tays an animal on the glass. He's a fighter. He's a soldier. He talks about that competition with Jarius Hamilton coming in and fight for that role. And Dante Scott said that he and Hamilton are banging on the boards for rebounds pretty much every practice. And Mark Turgeon said that there was one time they both dove on a 50-50 ball, and he was just hoping that both of them got up. That's just how <laughs> hard they play. Two big, strong, physical guys. You know, but they're great. They're great to plug into the lineups because they can do a lot. They have guard skills. They can dribble. They can shoot. Gives you a lot, a lot of versatility on an offensive end as well. Scott played in all 31 games last year as a freshman and started 21 of them. Reached double figures in five of the final eight games of last season down that important stretch that helped the Terps claim their first Big Ten title. And I think for him, it was just toughness and aggression. You know, that's how he kind of made his mark. You know, a guy who do the dirty work, hustle, you know, never afraid. But it's hard to do. It's hard to start that many games as a freshman. You know, it takes a while kind of to get used to the speed. And, and that's tipped around and goes out. Active hands. Talk about it all the time, active hands. Just make, make the ball handler uncomfortable. Referees still haven't made a decision just yet on who that's going to go to. Both teams pleading their case. You see Eric Ayala there. I always wonder if that works. If you're whispering to a referee, telling them it's my <laughs> ball, I always wonder if they listen to you. It could either work for you or go against you, probably. I, I think it could go either way. <laughs> Ten seconds on the shot clock. Xavier Green going in and gets that one to fall for his first points of the afternoon. It's a nice touch right there. He likes that little paint mid-range area. You know, you don't always have to get all the way to the rim. Here's Morcel looking to go baseline. Feeds inside for Galen Smith. Can't get that one to go. Fight for the rebound down low. And it's a jump ball. 
So both teams starting to use the three ball a little bit. They've hit a couple in the last several minutes, and that's one of the big offensive threats for both of these teams. We'll be right back on the Big Ten Network. 21-20 is the Maryland lead against the Old Dominion. And Travis, here with Travis Bauman, you played with a lot of the guys that left the program, but they brought in some pretty important pieces as well to make up for some of those losses. Yeah, I mean, five five new guys, you know, all bring something different to the table. Um, you know, I think it's all about, you know, every team is different. So it's about putting the pieces together and kind of, you know, working it like a puzzle. We talked about those transfers, Hamilton and Smith, but some freshmen that could play some important roles this season for the Terps as Old Dominion gets it across the timeline against Maryland's press. You also look at some of the players that transferred out of the Maryland program and Joshua Tomai, Ricky Lindo Jr. and Sorrell Smith is a three is put up there and no good from Palavios. Fed all the way down to Wiggins. Wiggins puts up a three and cashes in. Aaron Wiggins, his first points of the afternoon, and it's a triple to extend Maryland's lead. We, we work on that. We've worked on that in the past. You know, you rhythm him up with the jab. He takes a step back, rise up and shoot it. Long pass, and it's almost intercepted there by Galen Smith with a bit of contact there. Take another look here with Aaron Wiggins. It's all about rhythm, rhythm and timing. Got his feet under him. Shoulder square to the rims, follow through, flick of the wrist. That's all it is. Aaron Wiggins going to look to improve on his three-point shooting. Shot 41% from three as a freshman, only 31% last year as a sophomore. Now he can shoot. I think as far as freshmen go, there's only one guy who made more threes this freshman year, and that guy plays for the Atlanta Hawks right now. So, <laughs> Yellen Smith doing the defending down low, and it's Louis Zikpe who draws the foul. He's been pretty active for Old Dominion so far. I'll tell you what, that's a nice post move. Get, get to your spot, one extra pivot, kind of bump, bump the big man off the spot. And a nice finish. Other side of the rim. Oh, he's been impressive for sure. So Zeke Pei will head to the line. Seventy-three percent free throw shooter a year ago in a season that was cut short. Old Dominion was able to play a little bit of the Conference USA tournament. Maryland didn't even get to that point. For the world kind of came tumbling down, but we're back and we're excited to be back. And we thank you so much for joining us here on the Big Ten Network. Ayala now hands off to Wiggins. Now more sell. Three of the main go-to guys for Maryland this season. Morcell from the free throw line puts it up and knocks it down. It's lovely. His, his whole career has kind of been no more as a driver. So he starts getting downhill. The defense takes a step back. He just rises up. He's 6'5. He can shoot over guards. So it's a nice shot. And it'll go back the other way to the Terrapins. And, you know, we talked about Daryl Morcell. He came in as like that defensive specialist, the guy that was known for his D. But throughout his time here, he's really rounded out his game quite a bit. No, he could, I think he can do almost everything on the court, you know. And, and I try to tell him all the time, you know, I think you're the best blue guy in the country. You know, he can shoot a little bit. He can pass. He can defend one through four. He's a good leader. Um, you know, so he's a guy, again, this year, they're going to look to him when things are going well, when things are going not so well. You know, he's, he's going to be a leader. And that was one of the things he talked about a lot in the preseason. He said, there's nothing that I haven't seen or been a part of when he's been part of this program. And he, he said he's ready to be that leader. Feels like the guy's been here a long, long time. Wiggins. Three coming. No good. That one coming from Jarius Hamilton. It's a great look, though. Good pass by Wiggs. Curry down the other end. A little fake there. Inside is, is Zeke Pei. He just seems to be having his way with Maryland right that's, now. That's that's another great move. Pump fade, get the big. Even if he doesn't jump, get him to lift up a little bit, attack his hip, get downhill. And the floor was super spread there. It was five players all on the perimeter. It's tough to get help in that situation when the five players are all spread out. Easy lane to the basket. Here is Hamilton down low, and he draws the foul. It's patience right there. I think when you're young, you think as soon as you get near the rim, you have to shoot it as soon as possible. Took his time, out fake. Guys go for it. Jump in, draw the contact. Take another look here. Curry's really been that main facilitator, making the things happen for guys like Ezekiel. And the help technically is supposed to come from that low weak side. But again, when the floor is spaced like that, it's hard to get over in time. Jerry's Hamilton at the line. 
Shot just about 70% last year for Boston College. He received that waiver for immediate eligibility back in October and really huge addition to Maryland's team going forward this year. Well, he's a big time player. The guys have all spoken really highly of him. And I, and I know he's meshed well with the culture. He makes the second, pushing Maryland to a three-point lead here with five and a half to play in the first half. Again, using that pressure partially to draw turnovers, partially to kind of slow the offense down, but also to get yourself going. Green yourself air active. balls a three. He only has two points on the day so far, Ayala. Hamilton has another go from three, and that time he makes no mistake. And Jeff Jones is not too happy and calls a timeout as Maryland's starting to push that lead just a little bit more. Yeah, it's important to close the half right here. They say games are won at the beginning and ends of half. Five minutes left. I know the guys want to finish strong, and Terge is going to say exactly that in the huddle. We'll stick with you in this 30-second timeout now. And Jerry's Hamilton, Mark Turgeon said he is a grown man were his exact words. And I think that pretty much sums it up. 6'8", 235. Again, the transfer from, from Boston College. And what does it do for guys like Dante Scott, who still is only a sophomore, but to have a little bit of competition in that position? No, that's awesome. You know, I think it's motivational for him. You know, he knows every day he has to come in and work. Um, have a guy, you know, a little bit older maybe to look up to and see his, his progress and trajectory. You know, and they'll push each other. Like Terry just talked about the way they've been competing. Um, I, I know that that kind of dynamic will continue on throughout the year, and it'll be great come game time. Have a look there at Eric Ayala, and we talked about he's one of the guys that's going to be taking over for Anthony Cowan, but it's not exactly the same because Ayala had a lot of playing time playing with Cowan, so oh, it's 100%. not like he's new to the role. No, not at all. And he's, I mean, when it comes to natural basketball ability, he's as talented as probably anybody I've played with over four years, and this will be nothing for him stepping into that role where he has the ball in his hands more. Here's Palavios. Um, Jalen Hunter works its way back over to Curry. Ezekpe at the top, defended by Marial. Four on the shot clock for Old Dominion. Tipped by Wiggins. Curry through traffic, floats one up. And that's a shot clock violation. Didn't get it off in time, wouldn't matter either way. So a slight adjustment from the Terps. They're switching some of those off-ball screens and taking away some of that action that ODU was getting early on. It's making it a lot tougher on the defense. But it's easy to do that when you have big guards, Eric, Aaron, and Darrell, all 6'5", been in the weight room. They can fight with those bigs down low in the post. Orsell spins and plays down to Hamilton. Back up top, Ayala, contested three, makes no mistake. Eric Ayala. Now with eight points on the day to be the highest score for the Terps so far. Don't let him get going. He's one of those guys that once he starts hitting, it's tough to slow him down. Struther from three missed that one. Now Morcell comes away again. Now Hamilton looking to go baseline. Kicks it out to Wiggins. Puts up the mid-range two and clean as you like from Aaron Wiggins in Maryland. Pushes over a 10-point lead. So we were talking about earlier, scoring from three levels. You don't have to get all the way to the cup. You find your sweet spot right there in the mid-range. Just rise up. He's a big guard. Nice soft touch. Here's Green. We can go inside. Kicks it back out. Zeke Pay. Struther at the top. Missed that one as well. Offensive board for Old Dominion. Terzin talks about that a lot. Long rebounds. You take a long shot. A lot of times the ball come hard off the rim. You can't run right under the rim. You got to stay closer farther out and corral, corral those long boys. So Maryland on a 10-0 run over the last two minutes and change, 13-2 and if you want to extend it a minute. Finally found their rhythm, the Terrapins. Hamilton, floater, no good, but seven-foot Shomariao puts it back and draws the and one. Big fella, the lion. I'm telling you, it doesn't take much. He's right there by the rim. Barely has to jump. Seven foot two, a seven eight wingspan. And we'll take another look at Eric Ayala, who put up that big time three. And Maryland is rolling here in College Park. They're definitely in the rhythm, I'll tell you that. Marial gets it done.
back here on the Big Ten Network as we take a look over a decade with Mark Turgeon at the helm of the Maryland Terrapins. Obviously didn't have a chance to prove himself in the postseason last year, but Travis, he's been such a mainstay in this program for the last 10 years. Yeah, I mean, he says it all the time. It's hard to win at this level. Every game, doesn't matter the competition, is really hard, and, you know, you see there he's done that. Um, and it's just taking every team, I think, and just getting to know the guys and, and kind of, like I said, like a puzzle, you know, making the pieces fit together. So, you know, he's done that. We pick things up with... Show Marial at the line. Missed the first 12 games of the season last year, recovering from surgery on both shins, stress fractures for the big man. As he completes the three-point play, Don't and Mark Churchill was saying, they're, Scholl's finally starting to look like the guy he was in high school. Now, that guy was, I think, top five in his class at one point. You know, he's, he's got it in him. I think it's just, again, continue to get healthy, stay out there. Um, you know, he, he has everything you need. 12 on the shot clock for Old Dominion. Struther hands off to Curry. A little spin cycle there. He keeps it. Back out to Struther with five seconds on the shot clock. Defended by Morcell. Struther puts up the floater and air balls it right into the hands of Wiggins. The thing I loved about that possession, it wasn't just one guy guarding the ball. It was five guys guarding the ball. You want the ball handled to see as many bodies between him and the, and the rim as possible, and they're doing that right now. Here's Dante Scott. Wiggins plays it down for Marial, who puts it up, can't get the finish. The big man as Austin tries, pulls down the rebound. It's great patience again, though. He got in the lane, pivoted. Chole got good position. He'll make that more than he misses it. Green, contested shot. Can't quite find the finish as Ayala brings it down the other way quickly. Dante Scott on the far side, thought about it, puts it down and inside to Marial. That's one of those kind of careless turnovers that Maryland's going to try to limit, but it's early in the season as Curry comes down the other way through traffic and lays it up and off the glass. That's another one, Terry's one leg. You have to step up and stop the ball. You can't let him get all the way to the rim like that, especially not with his left hand. He's left-handed, so that, that left-handed finish, that's what he wants. Curry now seven points on the day, three of five from the floor. We pick things up with Aaron Wiggins for Maryland as he draws the foul. That one will come against... Redshirt senior Xavier Green. That'll be his first. We have just about a minute to play in the first half, and Maryland's lead has expanded over time. They're now on that 13 and 2 run over the last four minutes or so. No, they're playing well. They're, they're showing their faces, showing their bodies on defense, getting stops, getting out and running, moving the ball side to side again. Ball and body is moving. And they're, and they're getting good looks. But, you know, a lot can happen in a minute. So it's important to close the half strong. That's all that matters right now. Jarius Hamilton will come in for Shoal Marial. And if you're Old Dominion this last, this last minute, I think you just want to close with some momentum. You know, try and get some easy looks, hopefully closer to the rim. Wiggins clean strong. on the second attempt and 72% free throw shooter last year. Jalen Hunter trying to bring it across and gets it. Threw traffic up with the left hand was Curry, I believe. And shot will be waved off foul on the floor. And uh, out of all the things Maryland's done well in this first half, I think rebounding might be the best. I haven't really seen a lot of second chance opportunities for the Monarchs. And, and like we were talking about earlier, that's something they do really well. Maryland with 20 rebounds to Old Dominion's 14. Rebounding margin. That's something they'll continue to talk about throughout the day. I'm sure that'll come up in halftime. Akeem Hart checks in for Jarius Hamilton, who picked up his second personal foul. And Hart gets the rebound right off the bench. Under 45 seconds left in the first half of action. Ayala back out. Hakeem Hart, a three. No good. And Scott was charging hard for the rebound, but Old Dominion peels away. There's good transition. You see Hakeem stopped the ball, made them pull it out. Difficult shot from Elite Curry. Telling like you, don't let him get to that left hand. That little in and out move freezes the defense, gets all the way to the cup. Tough finish with the left. 
15 seconds on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Here's Ayala. Ooh, three seconds Ooh. left, and he lost it. Goes out of bounds. We'll stay with the Terrapins with 1.4 seconds left on the clock before we head into the halftime break. And Galen Smith will check in. We're going to have a Maryland timeout in the meantime. So Maryland, after going on that big scoring run, hasn't hit a shot from the floor in the last almost three minutes now. And you think it's just maybe towards the end of the half, just slowing down a little bit, or what do you think the change is? Yeah, uh, I think a couple adjustments maybe from, from on, on the ODU side, trying to take, take away some of that dribble penetration and keep guys out of the paint. Um, and, you know, basketball is a game of runs. You're never going to sustain something for 10, 15 minutes. So it, it was natural. You see a return to the mean. But, um, again, you know, one second. Let's see what they can do. Get one more score before half maybe. And if you're ODU, like, you know, 11-point deficit, you know, could, could be a lot worse. So you definitely want to get that stop right here uh, and try to finish with a little bit of momentum here. It's a pretty even split when we look down the box score. Maryland shooting 43% from the floor, Old Dominion 40. The real difference maker has been that Maryland is shooting 42% from three and only 23% for Old Dominion. We saw them come out with a lot of looks and just couldn't really connect on that angle. Yeah, they got a lot of good looks early on, and that's when we were saying maybe they should try to get a little closer because the three ball wasn't going down. Uh, you know, in basketball, things can turn around really quickly. And I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll continue to shoot them, and if they get hot, they'll make, they'll make a nice little run. So Akeem Hart on the inbound. Ayala puts it up but draws the foul with 0.2 seconds left. I feel like these last 30 seconds have taken like 30 hours, but that's just kind of how everything has felt since March. That's one of those, you know, old head at the park moves. You know, get, get, get the guy off his feet, lean in, get the content, contact, go straight to the line. Ayala, a 73% free, free throw shooter a year ago. There's still a little bit of rust. It's been 260 some days since Maryland's taken the court. Competitively, that is. Feels like it was just yesterday, though. Well, you were the one to dribble it out in that last game. Oh, I'll never forget that. People will ask, yep, that was Trav. That was Trav. <laughs> is, there a, is there a note in the history book for that one? I hope so. I hope there's a little <laughs> star at the at yeah. asterisk at the end of the <laughs> Maryland won the Big Ten Championship. There should be a stat for that, for dribbling the clock out. We'll see if we can make that happen, but pretty good half for Maryland. No, really good. I'm sure they'll be happy with it. You know, 11-point lead. They look good. They got good shots, played good defense, rebounded well. Uh, no complaints. You know, I I'm sure they'll be happy with that. And what do you think is going to have to change as we go into the second half? Uh, I think just, you know, con continue to get to get the ball in the paint. Paint touch will be important. Continue to move it. Just don't get stagnant on offense and, and transition defense. you got to stop the ball. got to make them work in the half court and try to use all 30 seconds. We'll take a break for halftime here on the Big Ten Network. 42-29 is the Maryland lead. Back here on the Big Ten Network, a 42-29 lead for the Maryland Terrapins in the first game of the 2020-2021 season. Brendan Hartlove alongside former Maryland guard Travis Valman, and it's been a fun one so far. We're through the first half, and Maryland's offense seems to be clicking pretty well so far. No, nah, it's a great half. I'm sure the coaching staff loved it. You know, they're getting a good mix of, you know, outside jump shots, getting to the paint, getting to the free throw line 12 times, and haven't turned the ball over too, too much, so I'm sure they're thrilled with it. And one of the guys that's been really key on offense for Maryland is Eric Ayala, who we've had a spotlight on coming into this season. No, what I love about him right now is that he's really picking his spots. You know, he's the point guard, so he's going to look for his own shot, but he also has to set the table for the rest of the guys, and he's getting into the paint and getting himself good looks and, and the rest of the team looks too. And we've talked a lot about the departure of Anthony Cowan Jr. just because he was that guy for Maryland for so long. But now Eric Ayala coming in, and he's kind of going to be the one they're going to look to to show up in those big moments like Ant did. 100%. And, and the best thing I can say about that is that he played with Ant, started with yeah. him for two years. So he, he's seen it day in, day out, and, and he's more than capable. He knows what it takes, and he's ready. I know mentally he's there, and, you know, he's also a great start in his first half, but it's important to keep this going for 20 more minutes. One of the big difference makers so far in this game has been the work on the boards. Maryland significantly better than Old Dominion, 21 to 15. What have you seen from the aggression for the guys down low? They're boxing out. Yeah. You know, they're boxing out. That's that's the first step. You can't go get the board until you get your man off the glass. They're boxing out. They're getting to the boards, um, you know, and, and limiting those second chance opportunities. Low 
look at the reigning Big Ten sixth man of the year, Aaron Wiggins. But we pick things back up with Eric Ayala and Daryl Morsell. Those three guys we just mentioned are really going to be the difference makers for the Terps. Here's Wiggins, a quick three to start the second half, and it's no good with a foul on the floor. Start to the second half is a little bit like the start to the first half. You know, it might take a couple minutes to warm back up, especially in an empty gym like this. No fans can't draw on that energy. Um, so, you know, look for them to slowly pick it back up. Marcel on the inbound to Wiggins. Another three. That one, the same result. Now Old Dominion looking to come with some tempo. I love the fact that he shot it, though. You know, if you're a shooter, you miss one. Next time you get an open look, shoot it again. You get a third look, shoot it again. Every time you see you make it. That one missed Xavier Green for Old Dominion. Quick tempo to start this second half. I like it. It's fun for us, fun for the guys, fun for the people watching. Let's get up and down, fellas. <laughs> and that's what it's been in these first 40 seconds or so. Just a track meet. It's broken out. Something you know a little bit about. We can get into that later. Thing or two. <laughs> Thing or two. Here's Curry, and that one again no good. Fight for the board down low, and Morcell comes away with a long pass down. Wiggins goes up and gets the roll. He had a few looks from the corner, but it's right at the cup where he gets it done. Bit of a different defense from Maryland. Getting to that in the next stoppage. Here is Curry at the top. 15 on the shot clock for the Monarchs. Here's Oliver. Six seconds. Here's Reese. Airballed it there from A.J. Oliver. Love that. Another stop. Make him use all 30 seconds. Don't give him anything. That's a great Galen pass. Smith goes up and throws it down. With the left, too. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Left hand, <laughs> bounce pass, thread the needle to the defense. The guys on the bench are loving it. Look at them. What, what is the, any idea what the two are? little raise the roof. Yeah. You know, you push up, raise the roof. <laughs> Guy jumped out the gym. Going through traffic, up off the window, and drawing the and one is Xavier Green from Williamsburg, Virginia. It's a tough guard right there. So you got a big setting a ball screen, and then a guard setting a screen on the big defending. So. Galen Smith wasn't able to slide and stop the ball because he got screened. It allows Xavier to Green to get to the cup for the two. And Green talked about ahead of this game just how different it's going to be in this COVID-19 era as he completes the three-point play. But he said nobody wanted to really go home for Thanksgiving or Christmas just because everyone doesn't want to catch COVID. And they're very committed to making sure that this season happens for Old Dominion. Yeah, and I think, and this probably goes for all 10 guys on the court and everybody on the bench. These guys just want to play basketball. Ayala, a three, and he knocks it down. Especially Eric. <laughs> he loves basketball. He is three for three from three. He's found that rhythm now. He's locked in. It's like target practice at this point. And you said right when he made that first one, don't let him get hot because he will continue to heat up as Reese has one and airballs it. Wiggins looking to press the tempo. More sell through traffic off the window and in. Turf picking up right where they left off here in the second half. I think it's the energy thing. You see them pressuring, you see them getting steals, getting out of transition. Hamilton, more sell the reverse jam. <laughs> Maryland has made five of their last five, and we head into a timeout. I saw him do that my freshman year. I, I, his freshman year. I didn't know he could still do that in the senior year. I'm impressed. I'm now, impressed. now he's getting old. Uh, yeah, you, you know, a lot, lot, lot of games. An 8-0 run for the Maryland Terrapins as Morcell sends us into the break. 53-32 is the score. Galen Smith getting it done down low, the new big man. And that was one of the jokes. <laughs> Jalen Smith going out, Galen Smith coming in. And is it just sticks in disguise? Look, look at Big Sticks. About time he grew some facial hair. <laughs> I know he's been waiting on that. I'm just messing with you, Sticks. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Tenth pick in the NBA draft, the Phoenix Suns, a big, big moment in the program. But there's Galen Smith. We haven't tripped up on confusing him just yet. They are very different players, but both maybe can have equally as big impacts for Maryland. Sticks last year, Galen Smith this year. We'll have to wait and see. But we pick things up with Old Dominion. Terps on a 7-0 run in the last 30 seconds. 
So Maryland's back to switching those off-ball screens, one through four, and it makes it a lot easier to guard. We don't have to fight through and chase everything. Curry, left-handed traffic off the front of the rim as the shot clock was winding down. Marcel brings it up. Now Wiggins into low post for Galen Smith, the one that can grow facial hair as he misses <laughs> that one. Pretty nice beard he has, too, to be honest. Back up to Malik Curry. Jalen Hunter, the sophomore out of Manchester, Connecticut. Three coming and good from A.J. Oliver. So the switch was a little late there. I think Aaron was down looking to help stop the drive. And his man said the, the phase screen wasn't there in time for the switch to give up open three. See if Old Dominion can get some going on that end. Here's Ayala. Ends his dribble, goes to Wiggins on the far side, looking to drive, puts it up from the free throw line and gets it. Wiggins has 10 points so far to go along with his five boards. I like that. Use his body, bump the defender off. Again, just rise up. I think I might have taught him that. <laughs> there is Jalen Hunter. Gets it off to Austin Trice, the transfer from Kansas State. Back to Hunter. And that one rolls over top to Galen Smith. We'll see, again, several subs for Maryland coming in in just a moment. And here's Wiggins. Puts it up again, and he's just unstoppable. You can tell he's feeling it right now because he didn't even look at the defense. He didn't look at the guard. He didn't look at the big. All he saw was the rim. He's in his zone right now. And he's one of the guys leading that press, too. All the way down the other end wow. is Curry. Coast to coast with the left hand. A little Euro step, might have been a little offhand finish. That's tough, especially over the big. Galen went straight up, was able to finish over him high off the glass. 11 points, 5 of 10 for Malik Curry so far. I know they want him to get something going if they want to try and get back in this game. Foul called on the other side. Couldn't quite make out who it was on, but we'll head into a timeout and have several Maryland subs coming back after the break. Wiggins just tearing it up for the Terrapins right now. So with everything that's gone on in 2020, new additions to the Maryland court and racism, and in solidarity, the guys on the back of their training tops had their messages as well. And Travis, you know very well that this team has been very outspoken with lots of those kinds of things and done a lot internally as well. Yeah, I mean, these guys are super aware. You know, they know what's going on in the world around them. And I think they're real. They know that they have a platform and they you know, have the opportunity to kind of, you know, spread awareness about these types of things and make statements even while they're continuing to compete and play and, and you know, work hard. We've seen so much of that throughout professional sports, and now that we're having collegiate sports start up again as well, you're seeing that continue. We saw a lot with the NBA, and last when things kind of came back early, WNBA was a huge leader in that regard. And now you're seeing it trickle down into the collegiate level as we begin these seasons. We saw the same words printed on the Capital One field at Maryland Stadium as well. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously you have this message right here displayed for the public, but these guys have also been having these conversations, you know, behind closed doors. Again, just trying to educate themselves, educate others, um, you know, do what they can. Again, you take advantage of the platform that they have as Division One student athletes because, you know, it's tough to get where they've gotten and achieve what they've achieved. And if I'm not mistaken, Turgeon had them read a book to help with that education of all of his players and a lot of conversations the team has had internally as well. Yes, it's not about basketball every day. You know, there's more to life, and, and, and they know that, and it's important to them. And, you know, I'm glad to see the work they've done and will continue to do. I think a lot over the last couple months has realized that there are so many things more important than basketball, more important than sports, more important than a lot of things that, you know, we sometimes take for granted. So an offensive foul against Old Dominion drawn by none other, Reese Mona played basketball with a lot of guys over the years, and I think Reese is the first person I've ever met who legitimately enjoys taking charges. I thought you were going to say legitimately enjoys Chipotle. Oh, he <laughs> does like that too. Don't don't get him going about the barbacoa, <laughs> but charge of charges in Chipotle. <laughs> the Reese Monomata. Hakeem Hart on the other end for the Terrapins. Dante Scott, a three from the near side, knocks it down. 
Part of that well-rounded game we talk about so frequently with Dante Scott. Good offense right there. You have Chole rolling to the rim. Obviously, the defense is going to try and look at the 7-3 guy rolling. Dante replaces out of the corner, right in rhythm, squares his feet, squares his shoulders, knocked down. Oliver at the top. Can't get that one to fall. And Marial was out-rebounded there. But eventually, Dante Scott pulls down the board. Scott outside. Smart of three. No good, and again, Ezekpe. Haven't said his name too much here in the second half, but he was very lively in the first. Now he's been a man on the boards right now. You know, he's, he's competing. 15 seconds on the shot clock for Old Dominion. Jalen Hunter in possession, trying to keep it low. Back up top, Ezekpe. Little pump fake. Now Oliver. Curry, three to shoot, goes over top of Smart and gets it. It's another one of those. You can't do much about that one. It's lined it up. Maybe get a hand up, get a step closer. You know five seconds left on the shot clock. There's not much he can do. He was, he was trying to line that shot up. It's a great look, great shot. Laquan Smart going inside, back out, Dante Scott. Feeds down low to Marial. Over top, missed it off the front of the rim. Ezekpe pulls down the board. It's another one. The guy's working on the boards. Here he is on the other end. No good. And Smart was first to it. And Marial corrals and hands off to Dante Scott now. Here's Hart. Down for the 7 2 Marial. Dante Scott open at the top. And he cashes in. Love that from Cho. He took his time. The double came to him. Put the ball up high where nobody else could get it. Kept his head up. Dante goes to somewhere where Chole can see him. Again, lines it up. And he can do that. He can make those shots. 11 points for Dante Scott so far. He's 2 of 4 from 3. Oliver inside and pulls one back. Again, Roll rhythm. Dominion. Right foot, left foot, 1 2, rise up. It's a lot easier to make shots like that when you're in rhythm. When you got your feet underneath you. A steal here by Hunter as he goes down and puts it up. Smart not able to recover in time. And Old Dominion's back within 20. And Hunter can do that. You know, he, he puts pressure on the ball, heat the ball up, make the ball handler uncomfortable. Ball and that's handler. what they're going to need to do. Ball handler here. Smart brings it up. And now Mona on the far side with 15 on the shot clock. Hart, cross-court pass for Smart. Marial can't quite corral it. Mizikpe comes away with it. A foul there against Dante Scott. So Dante Scott has been getting it done offensively as the big man coming up with some threes as well on the kick out from Marial. But Old Dominion not quite out of it yet, showing just a bit of scrappiness here on the other end to get the steal. And it's Jalen Hunter with the finish on the other end. 63-45, Maryland here on the Big Ten Network. Well, in the timeout, they had the I Have Maryland Pride video. And pretty much almost all these guys on this list under Mark Turgeon that have been drafted appeared in that video. And you see a couple of the cardboard cutouts of guys you know pretty well. Yeah, it's always fun to look up during the timeout and see that. Got sticks in there now, and... Still waiting for my cameo, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Make some calls. <laughs> you saw there the end, the cardboard cutout of Alex Len, who was the last the top 10 overall pick for Maryland in the draft before, you know, sticks last week. So also both of the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix knows what they're talking about. Phoenix loves the Turks for good reason, though. Sticks is a, sticks is a stud. I'm happy for him. Here's Hakeem Hart for Maryland. Alquan Smart back to Hart. And then we're going to have a foul here. Three second violation. It's a great defense by Old Dominion. The help guy on the low side, it's a tough guard. He has to tag the roll man, slide under the rim, and then close out on the shooter. He was able to do that, take away the roll and the shot, force the Turfs to swing it again. And we get a three second call. A couple of subs coming in for the Turfs. The five on the floor now is Morcel, Wiggins, Scott, Marial, and Eric Ayala. I don't know if we've seen this lineup yet today, so it'll be fun to see what they do together. There is Malik Curry. 
Defended by Morcell. Oliver at the top looking to drive on Scott. Baseline goes Curry. Back out. Oliver from the top for three. No good. And Morcell pulls down the lofty rebound. Wiggins in the corner. Looking to drive. Kicks it out. Morcell through the lane. Up the floater. Can't get it to go. And Curry pulls down the rebound. Looking to go quickly. He'll spin things back out and take a three. Missed that one off the front of the rim. Offensive board by Old Dominion. It was a <laughs> travel, but Mariel was right there, ready to deflate that ball into the ground. Came out of nowhere. I guarantee they didn't even see him. That's who you're talking about. He can be deceiving sometimes coming up from behind you. No, he's, he's always there. With that wingspan, he's always around. Mariel will take a seat on the bench. Galen Smith back into play for the Terrapins. Brendan Hart, love Travis Valman here on the Big Ten Network. So happy you could join us for this first game of the season. A long-awaited return to the Xfinity Center floor for the Maryland Terrapins. Inside, drawing the foul. The and one is Eric Ayala. He has done it all for the Terrapins today. I think one of the best qualities to his game is his pace. You saw him there. He hesitated. He lifted up. He froze the defense right here. Stop. Go. Hesitate, get to the rim again, and he knows how to use his body to finish around the rim with contact. But it was that hesitation move that got him going. Yeah, and before last season, I think he lost about like 10 pounds or so, and he was noticeably leaner and quicker and just showing that explosiveness. I'll tell you what, he was dedicated. He'd walk in the room, and he's got a sandwich, and he's taking the bread off and throwing <laughs> it away. He, he, was, he was serious about that, yeah. and, but it paid off. You know, the, the, guy, the guy prioritized it, and it's paying off for him. Old Dominion gets it across the timeline. Ayala now has 16 points, a perfect. He hasn't missed a shot. Five of five from the floor, three of three from three, and three of three from the free throw line. Ten I mean, seconds for Old Dominion. That's what you love from your point guard, especially an older guy. Just efficiency, you know, picking the spots like I was talking about earlier. Floater in the lane is good. Jalen Hunter. Jalen Hunter. That's four points for him on the day. This is his second made shot. I love the floater, you know, like I keep saying, you don't always have to get all the way to the rim before the help gets there. You know, more people should work on it. Well, that ended a scoring drought of about two minutes for Old Dominion. Scott working his way inside. Wiggins. A little bit different defensive action. Old Dominion is mixing up. Sometimes they're doubling on the catch and sometimes on the dribble. Wiggins the step back, no good, but coming in for the rebound is Galen Smith. Reflected out will stay with the Terrapins. Look good from here, I tell you what, dead on line. A little bit short. Probably make it known now because you have been hearing a little bit of crowd noise, and we did establish that there is no one in the arena. About 70 decibels is Dante Scott cashes one in, and Xfinity Center would be a lot louder than 70 decibels right now if it was full. Tay was out here about 90 minutes for the game, getting shots up. Probably shot that shot right there at least 50 times. So there's no surprises. He's got it going today. Here's Trice. Feeds inside. Curry got a fingertip to it, but not enough to keep it in. It might have been deflected on the way through. So we'll head into a timeout, and it's been really strong offensively for Maryland. Now they're firing all cylinders right now, getting good looks, shooting it with confidence, playing their game right now. I love it. Back here on the Big Ten Network, and we've talked time and time again about how weird of a season it's going to be. So now we take a look at this, quote, unofficial preseason poll. Writers from the Columbus Dispatch and the Athletic, two writers for each team's coverage, put together this poll. And Maryland doesn't quite sit as high as, you know, they finished last year. Part of that with the players that they lost. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this will be bullets, bulletin board material for the guys, you know. Um, they're, they're competitors, and, and they'll see that and think, you know what, let's do better than that and, and just compete. Again, that's why you play the games. And part of that's also because just how strong the Big Ten Conference is year after year after year, and some of those teams at the top just have that talent. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's going to be super tough this year. There's a lot of uh, talented guys who decided to come back to school, and you know, it's going to be a grind, but they'll be ready for it. Reese, an uncontested three, missed it, missed it off the back of the iron. New shot clock for the Monarchs. 
Curry looking to drive. Kicks it back out, but it's stolen by Morcel. But a foul coming down the other way. Morcel wanted to take that one to the hole. The help defense has been rock solid today. You see Curry make the pump fake, takes one dribble towards the paint. You see two or three guys converge. That's a flagrant one coming on Kalu Izikpe. I think Daryl probably wishes the referee would have swallowed the whistle. He would have had another chance for some showtime. I was going to say, you told me before that you're also a soccer guy, and, you know, Daryl probably wanted to play advantage there. 100%. I guess, I guess if, you, if you'd allow that. I think it's a perfect analogy, actually. <laughs> Marcel shot about 76% from the stripe last season. That last shot put him up to 12 points. This will be his first trip to the line today. Missed that one off the front of the rim. I think if you're a coach, you're looking at this box score right now, maybe your favorite thing on here is the balance. Mm -hmm. Wiggs has 12, Eric has 16, Daryl has 11, Dante with 14. You know, really spreading the wealth. A lot of guys getting good looks and, and just playing well offensively. And that's something Maryland's really prided themselves in over the last couple of years. You had guys like Sticks and Cowan, but even then you still had guys supporting around them. It wasn't just a two-man show. Yeah, those guys, you know, always will get the headlines, but it's as much about the other guys who are right there with them. Ayala a three, and he gets it. He has been perfect today. Six of six from the floor, four of four from three. Unfazed in the first game of the season. He knew that was going in as soon as it left his fingertips. You could tell. Green missed that one, and ODU's struggles behind the three-point line continue. Scott, a little spin move there. He's already at a career-high 14 points and three made three-pointers. The first game of his sophomore season. Ten to shoot for Maryland. Wiggins through the lane, and he draws the contact. They're going to wave it off. Pretty nice finish in the end, though. Not bad at all. <laughs> they count that in the NBA, so he'll get that one day. Take another look here at Eric Ayala. Little move and clean as you like. Again, it's the rhythm that jab, jab step sets it up, and Aaron with the left. It's tough to do, folks. 9 0 run for the Terps. Wiggins at the top. Goes in, puts it up. No good. That one bounced on the rim a couple times, and Curry will push the pace. Stolen <gasps> there, but a foul called. And <laughs> you didn't like that one too much, did you? Looked clean to me, but again, aggressiveness gets rewarded. You know, Curry gets ahead of steam going downhill. You know, he's great with that left hand. He's going to get that call sometimes. He has been very impressive so far. 15 points on the day for the senior Malik Curry. Picking up right where he left off. He scored in double figures 21 times last season. He's one for one so far. Hunter from the near side missed it short. And a put up jam. It's another big boy move right there. Drop step, two steps, flush it. We've seen a lot of good play for the first game of the season, especially not having those exhibitions. Yeah, and it's, it's tough. You know, again, like the first couple games, a lot of it is just getting that rhythm, getting your feet back under you. You're excited to play against somebody who's not wearing the same jersey you are. Excited to guard some different sets and things, and, you know, it looks good out there. The two transfers almost combined in there a little bit. Hamilton missed the three, but Galen Smith cleaned it up. He now has six points on the day. Played inside is Zikpe. Goes up again and draws the foul. Another aggressive move. The help's coming low from the backside. Lobbing over the top. Takes one dribble. Aggressive jump stop towards the middle. Puts it in. He's playing really well today. And Strother will come in for Old Dominion. Zeke has 14 points, looking to make it 15 to complete the three-point play. And he does. 15 and 11, a double-double to start his season. I'm sure he'll take that. He 
will take a deserved rest on the bench for a little bit. Now Aquan Smart brings it down with speed for backing it out. Here's Akeem Hart. Wiggins, a three from the far side. That one rattled out. Curry again feeds down for Reese. Inside, up. No good. Gets his own rebound and puts it in. Good tenacity there. Sometimes when the ball goes up on the glass, the guy who knows best where it's going is the guy who just shot it. And that time, he knew it was short, got right to the front side of the rim, and put it right back. Wise words from Travis Fallon. Really educating the folks at home to that. What can I say? I like basketball. <laughs> Some nice left hand floaters. Aquan Smart goes in and gets his first points as a Maryland Terrapin. The freshman from Evanston, Illinois, unanimous first team 4A All State selection last year. And eighth-ranked player coming out of the state of Illinois. It's a moment he will not forget, I'll tell you that. Oliver puts it up, no good. And again, Old Dominion not able to get anything going from deep. Having a little bit of trouble right underneath the basket as well as they draw the foul. Just to back that up, before that shot, Old Dominion 18% from three. Yeah, and they've gotten some good looks. You know, I'm sure the scoreline would look a lot different, obviously, if they'd gotten some of those to go down. But right now, it just looks like they're playing a little harder, you know? They, they want it more. They're competing hard on the glass, putting pressure, and, and they're going to play these last four minutes hard. Austin Trice, the senior transfer from Kansas State, played in 28 games last season and shot just under 60% from the floor for K-State. You see Reese Mona back into the game. And Shoal Marial as well. Second attempt is good, and Maryland looks to get it back underway quickly. Juan Smart will behind the back across the timeline. I like the adjustment he made. Instead of playing with in the backcourt, coaches talk about this, a, about this a lot too. Let's make one move, go by him. Morial comes through and slams it down. A big time jam from the Lion. You're big, the ball goes up, you run right to the rim, he did. Rewarded himself with a nice finish. Struther plays it down low, it's Trice going to work on Morial. Tries to go over top, which is a very, thing, very hard thing to do when he stands at 7-2. Smart comes down other end, missed it a little short. And that defense from Chola won't show up in the stat sheet, but he didn't get a block there. Still altered that, that little jump hook. Hunter missed that one as well. Shooting struggles continuing for the Monarchs. Just under three and a half minutes left in the first game of the season. Floater pass, Marial trying to corral it. Moves off the scores table on the other side and we'll head into a timeout. But Mario Turgeon said, looking like the player he knew in high school. He's been hurt for about three years, but he's coming up big, especially with his big time dunk. He's an impact guy and he can do this, you know, runs right to the rim. Fin right finish back it here off. on the Big Ten Network. Mr. Perfect, Eric Ayala, so far six of six from the floor, four of four from three, three of three from the stripe to toss that in, and he has had a great start to his season for the Terps. No, he's showing every part of his game, you know, shooting it from deep, getting to the paint, setting people up. Curry on the other end has it stripped, but there is a whistle down low. As getting into the game for the first time is Marcus Dockery, the freshman out of Washington, D.C. in the Brewster Academy. Can't turn the ball over there. That's one thing that it's been a pretty clean game offensively when you talk about execution. It's only the eighth turnover for Maryland. It's a pretty solid number, but you know, you turn the ball over, you give up easy opportunities in transition. Brendan Hartlove and Travis Bauman here on the Big Ten Network for you, bringing you the first game of the season. Very fortunate that this game happened. We've seen so many throughout the nation get canceled in the last couple days. I have an update on Maryland's schedule in just a little bit. As Aquan Smart brings it down the other end. Goes up. Marial tries to get the rebound. Does and puts it up. He barely has to jump. 
barely has to jump. I'm telling you, he's right there. And Aquan won't get an assist for that, but he got all the way to the cup. The track controls, man. So Chola has an easy opportunity on the other end. Strother goes over to Curry. The lefty from three missed that one. Izigpe goes off the window and in. He's fighting on the board. He's going to play the game till it ends. He's had a great game. Here's Hart. Floats it up. Marial lost his footing or was fouled down low. It's like a tangle of legs. Or if you're showing Marial, maybe tree trunks. But. <laughs> It's a nice, nice look from Hakeem, though. I mean, chose his head ahead above everybody. He's taller than everybody. Throw it up in the air, place where only he can get it, and they have no choice but to foul him. So he stays on the floor. Reese Mona will inbound it. Quan Smart now, Mario at the top. Hands off to Hakeem Hart. Mona now. Tries to dump it down low. It's swatted down, but Dockery showing some tenacity. And the foul is going to be called on A.J. Oliver. And that's the third personal on the redshirt junior from Birmingham, Alabama. Transferred in from Clemson midway through last season and still made the most threes on the team with 51. Two guys hustling for a loose ball. Happens, you get caught up. It's a good hustle. So now we get a little further down the bench for the Terrapins. We talked about Marcus Dockery, but now Arno Rivas, the freshman from Switzerland, coming in. We pick things up with Marcus Dockery at the line in search of his first collegiate points. We'll have to wait just a little bit longer. We'll certainly have that chance with two minutes left in the game. Here's Oliver. Bounce pass inside, Zigpe. Now Hunter. Back out, Zigpe defended by Rivas. Goes in. To his credit, he's made a lot of difficult shots today. No, he has. You know, he keeps his eyes on the rim. His great body control puts himself in a position to score. And he doesn't, you know, worry about contact. He just goes up and, and, and finishes the bucket. Rivas. Here's a Quan Smart from Hart, oh. and he goes up and throws it down. Get up, young man. I was surprised the first time I saw him do that, but but let me tell you, he 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 has some bounce to him. He can get up. So that's that's nothing new. You'll see a lot of that. Six foot three, wearing the number 23, and actually his favorite number is number three, but isn't wearing it because of Juan Dixon. But whew. nobody steps up. One leg, right hand. Elevate, young fella. I think people maybe underestimate him a little bit. Just he's not the most, he's not the biggest player. It's a, he's explosive, you know he's what I'm saying? And that, it's not something you don't look at him and say, like, wow, I didn't initially expect that. But he, he's got that to his game. Aiden McCool comes in for his collegiate debut, the freshman out of Charleston, South Carolina. Just about a minute to play. And Marcus Dockery will be called for the foul. It's not a bad number he has on, jersey number, number 20. <laughs> Did he ask permission to take that number? It, it, it was already written, you know what I'm saying? I, I knew he was next in the lineage. So we'll take a look at that Maryland schedule, and Mom has highlighted because right before the game, December 1st, we found out that, that game has been canceled. There was a positive test for COVID-19 in the Monmouth program, so that game has been nixed from the schedule. And, you know, just the reality of the world we're living in, it might not be the last one, but certainly, Maryland and every team in the nation as we continue to go through this, hoping that they can keep as many games on the schedule and as many players healthy as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's hard on a lot. You know, a lot of guys, it's a lot of sacrifice, you know, making sure you try to stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you know, again, everybody in the country is dealing with it. And as long as guys stay adaptable, you know, they'll be A-OK. -okay. But a lot to deal with this year for sure. Not, not ideal, but I'm glad we're playing basketball. It's been fun as we are now under a minute. It has been a good time being back. And like we said in the open, not sure if this was going to happen, how the season was going to go, but college sports are back. So Aquan Smart at the line. 
clean on the first attempt. Now has five points on the day. And now we take a look at Old Dominion's schedule coming up. And after this trip, they, they won't leave the state of Virginia for quite some time. And absolutely by design with everything going on. They'll, they'll take a lot away from this game, I think. Look at the film, you know, chop it up, look at things they can clean up a little bit. And I think moving forward, it'll be great for them. You know, I think it'll help a lot. Into the game is John Chenu from Houston, Texas, the freshman wearing the number 13 and setting the screen there. Hunter over to the far side, a three coming. No good. That one came in from Brady O'Connell, another freshman as Old Dominion's lineup gets younger here in the final 30 seconds or so. It's important minutes for some guys. You know, guys that to come out here, finish the game strong, have some fun. I'm going to play, play it to the buzzer sounds, though. Finish the game off. Up top, Reese, a three, and he cashes in. Only the sixth three-pointer made for Old Dominion today out of 32 attempts. Maryland has shot 43% from three-point land. Bounce pass. Rivas goes in, up off the glass, and can't quite get it. Looked like he went up to dunk it. Wasn't sure he went to dunk it or laying in. It happens. Outside, Reese again a three, and that one missed. Not the same result. Hunter goes in and draws the contact from Rivas. And with 4.7 seconds left, he'll head to the line. Got a rebound. Like we said, finish the game off. It's been a great performance, though. I'm sure the guys will be happy with it. This will be 44 consecutive home openers for the Maryland Terrapins, dating all the way back to Lefty Drizel. 1977-78 season. It's part of that consistency that Maryland preaches in, in their own arena. I think every time you're wearing a Maryland jersey, you play in this gym, you expect to win. It doesn't matter who you're playing, who, who's coming in. And they did that today. The Turks will dribble that one out, and they get their first game of the season with a win. And certainly a lot, as you said, for Old Dominion, but a lot Maryland can build on as well. Absolutely. You know, Terridge is going to look at this film, and, and he'll, he'll highlight some of the good things that happened, but also some things they can work on. And I'm sure there's a lot there for them to learn, especially for the young guys. And they'll get better from this. I'm sure they'll build on it. So the masks go on as they leave the court in this COVID-19 era. You see them picking up right where they left off with a win. It's been a great game back here on the Big Ten Network. We thank you so much for joining us as college sports are back. for.